right, y'all. Welcome to another episode of TFU. Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> I hate that fucking. Woo-hoo. Which one you prefer, though? It's oh, a man <laughs> show. The yarg is intense. It's like a right? yarg. It's a man oh. show. That's when I read comic books. That's what I picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's yarg. That was the noise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These guys have been working on their intro for eighteen months. They <laughs> still don't want to You didn't have I just one. introduced the show. Oh, they come in with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't like yours either. For the record. <laughs> You're not off the hook, but I was just like, that got my attention when you came in with the... Yeah, they'll get it. One day they'll get you it. Know, you, know, you, you gotta feel it out. We're working out the kinks. AD hasn't really changed his, though. <laughs> Alejandro keeps trying to come up with some sort of like... It's yeah. a man show. Off of AD, but... Yeah, you can't force it, though. It's gotta be... <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a natural... Thing for AD, it feels natural. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I feel I, I'm, at I'm at home with it. I'm at home with it. Yeah, that's his thing now. <laughs> gonna get a little statue, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, as you guys can see, we got another <clears throat> legend. legend. Legend in the house. <laughs> oh yeah. Actor. Oh yeah. Comedian. Talk about it. Writer. Tony Baker. What's going that's on, man? Hey, thanks for having me, it, man. I'm glad you made it. Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. I'm glad you made it. We for appreciate sure. you. Absolutely. Yeah. I came on down from Valencia. Born in Michigan. Moved yes. to the south side of Chicago. Oh, y'all need to research in, up in Chicago. Oh, no, that's what we do. Huh? That's what we do. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, how was it growing up in Chicago? Were you always funny? Was people funny around you? How did comedy come about? Uh, it's actually quite funny because I didn't know I was funny until I was in college. Mm. Like Because I'm the youngest of three boys, so they never laughed at my jokes. <laughs> like, you know, when I'm around, and they're older. They're, they're like, uh, my oldest is 10 years older than me, and then my my middle is six years older than me so I was always the little little brother mm-hmm. and so you know they had their friends over and I'm trying to get in on the jokes too and they wouldn't laugh <laughs> and so I was just like you know if they're not laughing at home I go to school I'm killing them but it doesn't register <laughs> it's just like yeah yeah but my brothers don't be laughing so I'm not funny right. so it never it never clicked and then when I get older I'm still funny but not really paying attention to it I'm just myself mm-hmm. and you know when you when you a teen you don't really want to be funny with the girls. Mm. You want you want to be Mac Mo. You want to be sexy. You want to be <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You want to be Devontae from Joe to see. You know, depending on the time frame and when you grew up. But and so it like you funny. And I'm like man, I ain't trying to be funny, man. What's up? You know. And so <laughs> I you know I negated the funniness. And then once I got to college, that's when everything clicked. It was just like. Uh, I was hosting, you know, talent shows on campus, you know, pageants, MC battles. And this one girl at random, I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and she I was at a common concert. This is during his electric circus tour. And she was like, You're hilarious. And I was just like, Who are you? <laughs> you hosted that you hosted that MC battle at, at New Mexico State and you were so funny. And I was like, that's what that's that's when it finally it's clicked. Like, it's dawn, dawn, yeah. I'm funny. Okay, all right. But and then ever since then, her her saying that echoed throughout when I when I decided to do stand up comedy. That's what echoed. That's crazy because everybody else in my life they said I was funny, but it still never really clicked because right. they knew me. They knew me outside of just hosting something. This was like a stranger saying mm-hmm. it, so it just hit different. When's the first time you got one of your brothers to laugh? You remember? Uh, like, oh, shit, I know I'm funny now. <laughs> I know, he laughed. It's over. Well, I'll be, be making my middle brother, the middle brother, Scott. I make him laugh more often than my oldest brother. But I made my oldest brother laugh, you know, when I was, in, when I was a teen. And we were around each other all the time because we had moved out to New Mexico because he got stationed there. Mm. And so so it was me and him a lot. And so I was making him laugh, but I was still holding on to when I was little, little. Yeah. And I was just, you know, the, the annoying little brother or whatever. And so he was laughing then, but it still didn't register. <laughs> I was just like, he was laughing that whole time. You need a female to tell you. I, I needed a woman needed to come to, in yeah. that I didn't know. <laughs> Off the street. <laughs> You're hilarious. 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 It was like, I must echo. be funny. Yeah. So <laughs> I think you got the best voice 
in comedy. Oh, thanks. I don't please. think anybody got a better voice than you. I've, I every time I when I listen to your voice uh, and you start telling stories, I just immediately start laughing. Thank you, man. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> do you do a lot of uh, like like cartoons and things like that? Have you even tried to do that yet? Yes, um, I haven't done a ton, but I've done. Uh, it was a sh- this Nickelodeon cartoon called Middlemost Post, and I did voice work for that. And there's this other cartoon that hasn't been released yet. That mm-hmm. I did voice work on too, so that's one of that's one of the goals for me is like uh, oh, yeah. to get in that vein. I would love to. The the perfect end game would be on like a, a long running animated show, right? right. You know, because The Simpsons been on since nineteen ninety. Do you do multiple voices? I can't do, do a ton. I can't do a ton because like some of those people do like oh, six voices. <laughs> the the, the <laughs> real genius like, of, of voiceover work. Yeah. What they do is incredible. Yeah. I know they always using big name stars, but like the the ones that really yeah. do this, yeah, it's crazy how many. And every time you look at like if you look at their IMDb, you see how many different characters they play on the same show. Even mm. like The Simpsons, like mm-hmm. you know, Mr. Burns is also this guy right. and this guy and this guy. And it's just like I'm not on that level. You know, I could do I could do minor switches here and there, but uh, I'm nowhere near. Yeah, those man. type of characters. I just saw a post about like the D- Disney voices, and it was like Mel Blanc, and he was like oh, oh, my God. Bugs Bunny and yeah. you know, like, Marvin the Martian, and the original voice of you like, would never know fifteen of the Looney Tunes characters. Crazy, you know I mean? so crazy. Yeah, voiceover work is crazy. Yeah. I've heard the voiceover community is very like tight and niche, and they don't want to allow people outsiders in. That's what I hear. Have you experienced that? I can't tell. You know, huh? <laughs> they, <laughs> they might be keeping me out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. And I, a part of me gets why they do that because, you know, ever since Robin Williams did Aladdin, they just been grabbing established actors, you know, and that, and that, that kind of hurts like the, the traditional voice, voice right. actors that, you know, don't have that star status coming in. So it kind of just like, dang, man, they keep casting these famous comedians, these people that, you know, Meanwhile, these people that can be eight, 18 different voices and you not even know it's them are getting, you know, passed right. over on gigs, like lucrative gigs. Yeah. Like if you look at Madagascar, for example, you got Ben Stiller, Jada Pinkett, Chris Rock, and there's a fourth person. Uh, Ray Romano? No, I'm, I'm confused now. Yeah, yeah, Ice yeah, Age. Him. But like even Ice Age, Dennis Leary, Ray Romano, John Leguizamo, and it's just yeah. like... You know, they're going for established actors. Like, y'all already working in film. <laughs> Let us have the well, voice work. Well, what right. I tend to see is that by the time they get to, like, the less popular versions on TV and stuff, then yeah. the other voice actors come in and do <laughs> right. voices to sound like John Lucasimo or to sound like True. one of those. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not yeah. actually yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. it's on Netflix now, and yeah. they don't got time to do a thousand episodes for kids. Yeah. So now it's a voice that kind of sound like him. They did that with so. uh, Return of Jafar. Remember the Aladdin sequel, Return of Jafar was straight mm-hmm. to video. Mm. So Robin Williams didn't return. Uh, yeah. So Homer Simpson is... The genie in that oh, one. Really? Don, mm. Don Castanello, whatever mm. his name is. So I think that's pretty interesting. It's like Robin Williams was like, nah. And then <laughs> that was, Homer was like, I'll do it. And yeah, you probably but, wouldn't even know that was Homer Simpson. That's what I noticed like when Open Season was like an animated movie that I liked. But like it was like Ashton Kutcher and Chris Rock, I think, were the two main ones. Yeah. And then the second one came out and it was like... Oh, it was almost Chris Rock. You know, it was like it was definitely <laughs> yeah. an impersonator that like, was trying to sound like Chris Rock. Right. Because you know, he's like such a distinctive voice. For sure. You can't like give this fucking animal a, a completely different voice. You right. Know what I mean, so that would be. I it, noticed that people act like bigger actors in voice acting yeah. as well. So because they can, they, they can mimic so many voices. Like, you know, if they ever, if it ever comes a time where they want to do Shrek and they can't get Mike Myers and Eddie Murphy back, yeah. I'm sure it's, it's a voice actor <laughs> mm. that can nail. Those voices yeah. on the mimic tip. So you ever practicing? You be practicing on your different voices? Really, when I do voiceovers for social media, I change my voice depending on the video. Yeah. So, like, if I do a crocodile, they always got the ashy, like, green. <laughs> what a fool believes. And just like, because when you look at when you look at alligators and crocs, they look they look like they talk like this, and it's just their skin is real rough and coarse. So I give them that that type of voice. If I'm like a bird, I always go nasal, like. You know, I just, I'm just making it real hot, man. What's going on? Like, you know, the, the beat just makes it like that's yeah. what I feel. And so 
you know, um, and like when I do a silverback <laughs> gorilla, he has kind of like a ashy brass voice. It's not as deep as the alligators, but it's like, hey, man, I'm the one that did this, you know, just <laughs> cocky and confident. So I just have those little nuances. Uh, it's still me. It's not yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you can't tell it's me on the underneath, but those are the types of, you know, play wits that I do. And then if I do like a video that's not animal related, and I'm like Tony Bacon, where I'll just lust after food. That's when I get real seductive and sensual. I'll be like, yeah, man, uh, the blueberry biscuits. And then I just go, you know, so I'll just be doing that type of thing, you know, on, on socials. How do you feel about AI now? As far Because it seems like it's funny here because sometimes we have, we used to have people come and read and yeah. do all these things. And one day I was like, why don't you just go on and just use AI, yeah. and then we don't have to call what's the name in and do this and do that. Are you? Does that? Does that? Is that really gonna? I think it's gonna disturb the industry a little bit for sure because it's, it's now like you know desperate measures you can use that too. right, and it's scary. It's just like man, because we all want to work. Nobody wants to be out of a job, right? That's that's from top to bottom. Whatever industry you're in, people fear losing losing out on work. Mm. And so if AI is coming in, making us lose out on work, we just like, nah, man, we can't, we can't do this. Yeah, I saw this thing that does that made so much sense to me. I never thought of it in this way, and it was like, I want AI to be able to like do my laundry. And oh. free up my time so I can do the art and I can do the music. Yeah, and instead, nice. it's like AI doing the art and the music. Right. And us having to, st- like, now we, we do work long hours. <laughs> now you do a lot of art. Like, we got <laughs> working for them now. We got to switch the dynamic yeah. and just go. I'm down with AI, but, like, let's get rid of right. the labor. Would y'all be scared to have an AI person living in your home doing your laundry? No. No. So anybody can come over there and do the laundry. I ain't tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, clean not, the pool. they're not human, though. <laughs> no, I'm okay with it. No. Okay. I think, I'm okay I think sleeping, at this point, we still have the ability it. to shut I'm them down. I'm locking the door. <laughs> yeah. Like, my kids would probably have a problem. Right. With, like, an intelligent one. But I guess it, they had to... I heard Facebook had to shut down... Facebook had an AI. They shut down years ago, they said, because it made its own language. Oh, that wow. humans couldn't... Like, that. it was talking to each other. To itself in its own language. Facebook had to shut it down. That's okay. creepy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always going creepy. So I'm just like. What I want is like, I want a labor bot that mm-hmm. I send to work and I yeah. still get a paycheck. Ooh. Like, I'll take the eight bucks an hour. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't, you don't have to pay us 20 bucks an hour. Right. Give me the eight bucks again, uh, but let my robot do the work. That's the best case scenario. Now, I get the check. Right. My robot, he gets his oil, whatever he's, uh, whatever, down with. Whatever you know what I mean? We, yeah, we, we're, we're a team. <laughs> we oil. got the team <laughs> environment going on. We get the good shit. Right. That's the best case scenario. I have a question. In your comedy career, when do you realize, okay, this is the type of videos that is going to blow up my social media? Media, blow my profile up um i did i did a voice my very f- first animal voiceover was i saw a video of this goat in brazil and he was just giving people the blues he was just like <laughs> he was just harassing this like little, little street of just people outside this lady walking with groceries he knocks her down he, he's cramming on the people on the motorcycle and they just like get out of here he just just wreaking havoc he got a bell on and then this dude comes to help the lady out and so he chasing the dude and the dude and running around trees and tries to kick him he's like oh are we kicking now that was the first <laughs> voiceover I did and this was this was like 20 this was probably like 2013 2014 and so I just did that just to for kicks just to throw it up on my YouTube I don't even know if I was that focused on Instagram at that time I don't even know when I got on Instagram but anyway so I did that and then I did another one of a uh, raccoon eating cat's food it was like a raccoon in the garage with cats, and he was in the cat food dish, just eating eating mm-hmm. the food. But he was raccoons, you know, they always got to wet the food, so he was taking it and then dipping it in the water, and then he was surrounded by these cats, just looking at him like, you know. So, <laughs> so I just did the voice for the raccoon, and it's just like, y'all gonna be doing this? Man? Be doing this man? You know what I'm saying? He was just because it looked like he was just looking at them, and they was looking at him like, man, what you doing? Here? <laughs> Then he runs off. He grabs one final scoop and runs off. And then he comes. No, he ran off because the humans got too close. 
He runs off, but then he comes back for one last scoop <laughs> and then runs off again. And so I did that one. So I did those two in close proximity. So a couple years later, I just reposted it on my Instagram, the raccoon one. And then that one just blew up. It blew the hell up. Some 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 people shared it. Some people shared it on Facebook. It went crazy. So I was like, let me just start doing these on the Because <laughs> it, it was just like, all right. Let me just start doing these. Because my friends was like, yo, put the raccoon video back up. This is before I went viral. He like, put that raccoon video back up. I was like, all right, man. And I just put it up. And then once that blew up, I was like, let me let me just let me just keep doing these here. Right. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's how. That's what did it. And so I was like, oh, okay. Because, so, you know, at, at that point, you know, a lot of people are doing voiceovers now. But at that point, I didn't see a lot of that. And so I, so I wasn't doing it just to get followers. It was just a, a genuine interest. And, in, you know, I've always lived with animals. So I've always lived with animals. So I was always interested in what they were thinking and how they would be saying what they're thinking. Right. And so yeah. when you say you always live with animals, like mm -hmm. a farm? No, no, no. We just always had pets. We always had uh, cats. We, we had dogs, hamsters, ferrets, snakes, parrots. You got you know. a cat right now, right? We got two right now. Motherfuckers got 75,000 followers they on do. Instagram. <laughs> they do. Goddamn cat. Yeah. Killing all you guys out there. They do. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, Dapper and Midnight, man. How you keeping that up? Uh, them are your just, cats getting top quality food from their pay and shit? Or you like, know what? I get cats them. making money. They got sponsorships <laughs> from Frisky. Midnight was in a commercial with me. We did a commercial for Spectrum, and Midnight was in it. You got the boost. You got uh, the animal boost on the pay. <laughs> nah, nah. But I wanted to put him to work because I, I be tired of them, man. Y'all yeah, like, yeah. yeah. got it made. I'm getting y'all good food, man. Yeah, I'm I'm saying here for free. Because yeah. this guy don't respect me. He don't respect me. Damn. Man. Yeah, because he, I be like, yo, man, stay off the counters. That's the rule. That's the rule. <laughs> stay off the counters. He be up on the counter. Mm. I be I be seeing his paw pad prints on the stove, mm. and then you know, and I could tell when he was up there because if I come downstairs, and he's kind of hiding from me. I was like, oh, you was just, you was just in right, here. No, he walks up there on purpose. Now cats man, fucking hate. It's just him people. though. It's him. My <laughs> other cat no, 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 never gets up about there. Cats, man. Cats just, they train you. To just feed them, and then they do whatever the fuck they want. That's oh, the yeah. beauty of cats for me. Yeah. Like. Even though even though midnight gets on my nerves with that, I respect it because cats never sold out to humans the way that, the way that dogs did. That's yeah. true. Like I can't I can't fully respect the dog because they're too they're too much of people pleasers. I'm be like man, because I look at their their lineage. Like when you look at a wolf, ain't no way you telling them what to do. Yeah. But now I look at them. Look at you now. They wearing sweaters. You they in family yeah. pictures. They whatever you need, man. Soft yeah. cats never fully lost that. True animal cat instinct. And oh, so right. I love that For about them. Thousands of years they were held at the highest levels, yeah. you know, in the Egyptian culture, yep. you know. So they they probably have this royal attitude. About they do, them, you know. Fucking like you know, we can do, do whatever we want. I'm gonna do whatever I want. I Did, want you to do feed you not me. remember our reign in Come Egypt? On, Come you on, know, you know like... what it is. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in hieroglyphics, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm in the temple. Exactly. I'm in these pyramids. So that's it's like, that's exact that I never thought about their attitude about that. That's why they got that fucking attitude. They still Just have the that royal, killer instinct. Yeah, the blood. Mm. Yeah, they still go eat. Your your cat could be in the house his whole life, still go outside and kill a bird or a mouse. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Like they never lose that. You seen those savanna are. cats or those big? Oh my god! Give one of them motherfuckers. Yeah, big ass. You seen those? Huge. Yeah. Look like dogs. Lady in Woodland. Yeah. yeah. Yo, big. The lady that parks outside the gym, she says, on the side of her car, selling Savannah cats. Oh, for real? like, yeah. Shit, I'm not a cop. One more? I would have to give one as a kitten, oh, though, because I already got that for a minute. Yeah, I can't I bring a she, grown no, one No, she in. got, like, a business selling them. Oh. I'll yeah. get, I'll yeah, give me that information. and give you to AD. Give me that information. Yeah. Bring bring I would have to get there. the Savannah as a baby, though. Otherwise, I know, you don't bring, trust it. No, bringing what a grown happened? cat in to to other grown cats that might not go well. And my cats got all their weapons, so I never got them declawed or mm. anything. They got they Damn. fully they fully functional. <laughs> they be I mean, they, they, they got fixed, but they didn't. I want them to keep their their claws because, like, what if they do get out? I don't want them helpless uh, out in the streets. Cause my cat, just, out my there, cat just disappeared one day when I was a kid. Just left. It was like an indoor outdoor cat. I'm from a small town. Fucker was in and out. 
He just never came. I think one of my neighbors killed that motherfucker. Yeah. Maybe the Chinese. Say, yeah. <laughs> the Chinese restaurant in your oh, town. God, oh, God, stop it. There was no restaurants in my town, Alejandro. <laughs> okay. Town of 300. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> So you talked about briefly like your cat appearing in your commercial. Yeah. I did I've seen that Spectrum commercial a thousand different times yeah. of just uh, just different variations of it. Right. How'd you actually get that one? It seemed uh, like you and your it's you and your friends, yeah, right? It, Kev Kev on stage and uh Kev is the reason I'm in those Spectrum commercials because uh Kev was working, he did the commercial with Spectrum mm -hmm. and then uh the Spectrum team came out to see us. We were on tour. And they came out to see us in New York. And, um, you know, Kev brought me in uh, for the for the next commercial. And so they've been rocking with us ever since. So Kev is the reason why you see me in all these that. different Spectrum commercials. Yeah. And then he brought Tahir in. And, like, you know, he keeps bringing people in. And so that's the reason. It's a national, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They be, they be Those running big that. checks. Big they be checks. running that thing. Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, that's nice. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and what, you know, I'm I'm a loyal cat. So it's like, you know, whatever Kev is doing, I'm just following suit in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, what they want to do in the future. So you guys, I know you and Kev, like when the pandemic happened, you guys kind of formed something. You guys started doing shows and things like that. Yeah. Is that when you kind of really capitalized on the uh, the comedy industry? No, because uh, we I've been doing stand up since uh, 2008. OK, that's when I started. And so, you know, I was already a stand up comedian. And then me and Kev started working together. I met Kev at Nate Jackson uh, was having a show in Tacoma. Super funny comedy show. I met him there. I saw Kev go up. And this was like probably, what year was this? I can't remember. It was years ago, though. And I was like, man, I like this guy. And mm. so uh, then, then Kev started working for All Dev Digital. And he would bring me in for sketches. The first sketch they brought me in was, it was based on my joke about me being scared of clowns. <laughs> and so they, they brought me in to Dr. Reasons. And so we did that. And so... Then, then he brought me in for like this show, two minute drill. Where I talk about sports, and then you know he was keeping me afloat, not realizing like you know these little because I'm living off of comedy at this time. And I already know comedy. You don't make no money when Absolutely you get on stage. Not. You get fifty dollars, seventy dollars. I'm like that, rent in L. A. is ridiculous. That's that's a good night in L. A. <laughs> if you get fifty to seventy five, like. Comedy doesn't pay well in L.A. Right. New York, you make oh. more money because you can hit multiple stages and they always paying. The Hollywood comedy scene, they be like, hey, exposure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you're getting 25, right. 30, you're getting gas money. How do you whatever. pay your rent during those times when you're trying to be an up-and-coming comedian? You, you got to have something else. You, you what get, did you, you, what gotta, did you have? So I had a... Uh, so I was married... Uh, I was married from 2003 to 2012, so I started in 2008. So you know, I was already just married, and uh, I was working. I was working this this job. I was an inventory specialist. Basically, <laughs> we went to different stores and counted the inventory, so I could set my own schedule with that job. Because my wife, my uh, my ex wife at the time, she was a nurse. So she she was holding us down financially. Right. And I'm out here trying to pursue the dream of acting. Then I got into stand up, and so my money was raggedy. <laughs> but I was holding the kids down. I was I was I had all that on lock. Right. But you know I'm just a house husband, and that's not the dream for men. Right. It's, so I was just like, man, it's I'm still my dream. dream. <laughs> that's the <a> dream for you. <laughs> I, I, knew he, I knew he was gonna let that ride. Yeah. He's looking forward to that opportunity. Oh man. Uh, I didn't want it. I was like, man, I don't, I don't want this. And I so, want like an old woman, but keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I was holding it down on that front. I was cooking dinner. I was I was I was getting the kids in school, taking them to school, picking them up, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so and then uh, one time my ex-wife came home after work and I was in there playing Call of Duty. She flossed. And she was just like, <laughs> mm. She just looked at me like and went upstairs. I was just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's over, man. <laughs> and I, I, I tried to flip it on her and make her feel guilty. I was like, man, I'll be holding these kids down, you know. <laughs> I was like, I was like the the jilted housewife. I'll be, for you. I'll be cooking you meals and you gonna do this to me. And then I was like, but she right though. And so I got that job, inventory specialist. And then once I started doing stand up. I was just like, and I once I started, I 
I didn't do nothing else. Mm. I was I was I was hitting comedy clubs every night, doing open mics, doing whatever open mic I can get my hands on. I was doing bringer shows. I was doing comedy competitions. Did it start affecting your relationship? Or was I, she wasn't tripping that you was hanging out. I was going like a lot. I was going a lot because you know it'd be. I would have to leave the house at night, so like you know the open mic is at six. Right. I'm leaving at six. You know, and if I'm hitting multiple stages, I don't get home until late. Mm. And so and then you know we hanging out, we talking, we at Denny's, you know what I mean. And so the boys, my boys were just like, man, you always gone, Dan. And I was just like, well, I gotta. And I looked at it as you know we came out here for this. I gotta I gotta go hard at it. Or, you know, um, or go home, as they say. Right. So, but then if I stay home and be a stay-at-home dad, I'm going to be empty inside. Yeah. I'll be a good father, but, you know, you can't be, men, we can't be empty inside. Whatever it is we decide to well, do. Well, you know what it is? We don't want to ever see that look again. Oh, That she it. gave oh. you, like. Yeah. Yeah, that look that ah. look hurt a little bit. Yeah. So it was just like, ah. Yeah. But she was right on that look because it wasn't like like if she was to look at me, if she was to look at me like that while I'm pursuing the dream, it would have hit different. I'd have been like, man, you don't believe it. Man. Right. But her look was valid in that moment. I'm out here at work, you over here playing Xbox. Mm. I deserve that look mm. in, in that moment. Uh so but like you know, you you sacrifice something when you go for something great, and some people sacrifice it. Whether it's in college, where you get your your four year degree or you get your masters or whatever, and you sacrifice time partying for your studies for your school, right. and then you end up at the career that you want. Um, and since I'm doing like a, a acting stand up thing, that doesn't look as traditional, visually or on paper, as like a collegiate, you know, career right. going for the career. So people don't look at it the same. But you gotta you gotta put that time in and that sacrifice, and so I say it like years later, I sacrificed time away from my family and my sons. But when it came time to them needing tuition money or like hey, a car, talk about it, I was able to provide that mm-hmm. because of the sacrifice earlier. Right. So I was able to be like, you know, my son be like, Dad, man, I need a car. I was like, Well, let's get it. Right. And so without that sacrifice on the early end, I wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, you know, chip in nah, where it was. So yeah, could have got him a car uh, in the video game. <laughs> right, let's <laughs> yeah, log in. Get you one of these cars on this Call right. of Duty. Yeah, get you on GTA. <laughs> GTA, we just still a car. <laughs> and we ride together. It's just now that since you, you, she's your ex-wife now, yeah. and and I'm no. Is she super proud of you, or this, is she upset that she didn't get the benefit? Of I, I sense that she's proud. Oh, okay, like, yeah, that's dope. Sure. Yeah, because we dope. we are really cool. We got a great relationship. She remarried, and uh, me and me and her husband. Was you cool. at the wedding? No, I didn't go to the wedding. <laughs> they did a they did a, a wedding. It was like a quick wedding in Vegas. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, my sons were there, but uh, I wasn't at the wedding. But we're like super cool. You know what I mean? Um, his name is Tony as well. Mm-hmm. We got the same. We got the same first and middle name. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like um, I know she's proud. Like you know what I'm saying? That's so dope. absolutely. And so, uh, so I appreciate her. Like I just, she wanted me to come out. To her parents just had their fiftieth uh, wedding anniversary celebration in uh, Albuquerque, mm-hmm. and she was like, "They want you there, and you know, I wanted you to like, you know, kind of host it." And I was like, "Man, say less." So I was oh, already out there visiting my mom and my brother in New Mexico, in Clovis, New Mexico. So I just went, drove to uh, Albuquerque, was three hour drive, and just hosted that. So it's like, that's dope. Yeah, man, that's dope when you can stay friends. Yeah, for sure. No, that's dope. I yeah. love that. Cause she she's dope, man. Like I, got, I ain't got nothing bad to say about my ex wife, and I'm not big on bashing my exes though. Mm. You know, I, I kind of kick them around a little. No, I'm yeah, just you be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, going back to your stand up, uh-huh. and we we're talking about different cities and the, how different cultures. Like, mm. what are your favorite cities to perform stand up at? Uh, Austin, Texas, Louisville, Kentucky, Energy Beak. Incredible over there for some reason. Uh, Chicago, New York, DC. Um, those are those are probably my favorites right now. And which one has the rowdiest crowd? That 
Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Is that where you from? Eating Nebraska all day. Okay. Omaha. Omaha was rowdy. <laughs> I performed in Omaha a few times, man. They they rowdy over there. Probably drunk before they got there. Man, they 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 be turning up over there in Omaha. So I would say they were pretty rowdy. Uh I try to tell these guys Omaha is one of the biggest gang pop- populations per capita in the country. Yeah. Omaha. I, you know what? I went to college with uh some friends I made, and they were from Omaha. And they were my introduction to Omaha. And mm. so I was just thinking, when you think Omaha, Nebraska, you just think of cornfields, yep. white folks, yep. corn, That's agriculture. It. So I meet these black folks from Omaha, and I'm just like, yo, y'all, y'all hood. And they were rapping, they could rap, and they could fight. And I was just like, what's going on in <laughs> Omaha that I didn't know about? And so that was my intro to Omaha. Shout out to Kenton and, and Cheryl and yeah, Marcus. You got to rap and, and fight in Omaha. And when you sure. say <laughs> rowdy, in what sense Like, is the Omaha crowd? Like, they throw stuff? They yell stuff? No, no, no. But they be yelling out some stuff. You know how you did that? Woo! <laughs> 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 Except it's not forced. It's real. And uh, just yelling out stuff. Yeah! <laughs> just that type of just that type of energy. Like they, they they weren't they weren't disrupting the show or like super disrespectful or like throwing stuff on the stage. But now, I feel city, like they could have got now. There. Which city is disrespectful? A little disrespectful? Or has any city ever turned on you or a crowd per se turned on you? Um, I can't really say that I've had an experience like that in a certain city to where it was just like I don't like performing in Bakersfield. Because uh, I don't like Bakersfield. <laughs> just as a city. It's not really the people, it's the city. I remember I did a show in Bakersfield. And the whole night, they just, a whole bunch of cats talking in the back. They throwing <laughs> down, they smoking in the back of the, the venue. Just loud. And the comedians up there fighting for their lives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, so the host goes up, cusses the crowd out. See, that's what Damn. I'm talking about, man. Every time I bring these comedians out here, man, y'all be fucking it up, man. <laughs> Doing this shit, man. I mean, they come all this. They come all the way in from LA, and y'all out here, man, fucking it up. He did all this, cussed him out, no jokes, just pure cuss out. Next all right, man, I'm bringing the headliner up, man. He gonna, this man Tony Baker, man. I'm like, yo, you set me up for the fail, dog. So I had to thank, thank God, the mic was cordless. So I was like, man. And so I went to the back where all them thug cats was at, making all that goddamn noise. I went in the back with them. I was like, what, what y'all talking about back here? So I went in on them. And then I risked my life. Yeah. <laughs> went in on them and then went back to the stage. And that's what saved me from just a horrible set trying to push through. I was just like, I had to, I had to risk my life on that one. Mm. So Bakersfield, I'm just like, nah. Bakersfield. El Paso, <laughs> you know. What about uh, like a heckler? You had a you had a terrible heckler ever. Just have like, you ever had to send like, someone so off? Us. Like, oh, from a fight. Okay, so the so the, the hecklers. One thing about me, I handle hecklers very well because automatically the comedian is already set up to win if you're funny. So the audience is already on your side. So it's, it's very hard to lose to a heckler for real, unless the audience doesn't like you, and then the you, you know then the heckler wins, or you see a, co- a comedian completely lose it because they can't handle the heckler. For me, I can handle hecklers very well, and um, you know, I matter of fact, I think my first interaction with a heckler is on YouTube somewhere. But I, I put people on stage. I'm like, oh, you, you, you think you can do this? Well, come up, come up, come up and do some time. And I put them up there and watch them die a slow death. And I'm like, see, now shut your ass up. So I've done that twice. Um, and then anybody uh, ever kill it when you made them no. do it? No. They owe it to. Was ready. They owe it to. <laughs> Shut the fuck up oh, and just so take the take the show. <laughs> Not as funny as you think you are, and so uh, so I've done that. And then um, I remember I got booed one time. It was a singular boo. There's just this one dude who was at a casino out in uh, not Temecula, but uh, the other casino out there, and he was like boo. And I was just like, so I went in on that boo. Uh, I remember one time I dismantled the dude, and I think he wanted to fight me after the show, because uh, 
he was waiting on me. I was like talking to people after the show, and I saw him back there, like waiting. I was like, oh, shit. I'm gonna have to fight this dude. But I think eventually he was just like, you know what? Because he just wandered off after yeah. that. But I was like, ready. I was like, this, he was this like, is it. Lo- having a long ass conversation. Yeah. Just kept him going. Because I peeped yeah, him. I was I talking know, to somebody, I, but I was watching yeah. him. I was just like, Tony, oh, I know waiting. why he left. Because on stage, you don't look as big as you really are. Oh. And then when you get out there with regular people, you towering over them. And you be like, eh, maybe not this one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But I saw him. And he wasn't looking happy. And then he just disappeared. I was like, woo. Because I didn't know how that was going to turn out. And so, and then, uh, what was the second part of the question? You you asked. Have you ever had to fight? Uh, have uh, they ever come to a tussle? Come to tussles? No, but there was a fight on the stage with me. Ooh. Like uh, So I was in San Diego. I was at this venue called Moon Doggies. And the stage is pretty much, I was pretty much on the floor. Mm-hmm. The audience is just there. So it, there was no elevation, right? And so... We get into like towards the end of my set, and I'm just up there. And then um, it was this drunk dude in there that I was going back and forth with, and he tried to he tried to grab my mic, and I was like, "Nah, man, just say what you got to say." And then I, I was holding it, and then the dude in the front front row was just like, "Man, just get the fuck off the stage, bro." Talking to that dude, he was pissed, and he was just like, "Hey, man, fuck you, bro." So they were they were going at it, mm. and they just fought. They just started fighting right there. They fell at my feet fighting. I'm just standing there with the mic. I'm just like, man. And so uh, and then at that moment, Moses was uh, running the show. He was just like, all right, show's over. And then they right. kept tussling. I was just watching. <laughs> I was just like, I just let them go at it, man. One man. of them had their toes out, man. The one that was like, <laughs> fuck you, man. man. Yeah. He so. sandals? Yeah, the dude, the dude in the front row that was fed up with the drunk dude, he had sandals on. And who was fighting sandals? I say it was a tie. It was tie? a tie. Yeah, okay. it was mainly tussling. Okay, you know what I mean. But the fact that you know, open toes stood his ground though. He's just like, man, get the fuck off the stage, bro. I like that energy. Well, to start talking shit in sandals, yeah. is wild. That right is wild. Off the Never back. underestimate. You gotta have confidence. Open toe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to start even talking Absolutely. shit like that. A lot of those UFC fighters toes be out. Now, were they were they white guys? Yeah. Sounded toes be sounded out. Sounded white. Toes right. be out. Tough. <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, that was my experience of like fights on on the stage. But nah. nobody's ever attacked me just straight mm-hmm. up yet. You know? Yeah. I read a story, and I don't know if it's true, because sometimes the internet be lying to me, uh-huh. that you just met your dad last year. Yeah, so, all right, so this is an interesting story. So, I grew up, my parents were divorced my whole existence. So, Philip Baker, we would, we would go to Philip's house. I don't call him Philip, but that's his name, just for context. So... We would go to his house every weekend. You know, he would come pick us up. Me and my brothers would be over there every weekend. And so that was that was my dad, you know. And so when I was in, uh, I think I was probably in 10th grade, my oldest brother was like, hey, man, you know, uh, you know we got different dads. And I was like, mm. I was like, what you talking about? I thought he was just playing. He was like, because uh, we were looking at pictures. We were looking at old pictures or whatever. And... um he was just like, yeah, you you wonder why we we kind of don't look exactly alike. I was like, I never really thought about it. And so um, he was just like, yeah, your dad used to play uh, in the NFL. And I was just like, what? And he's like, yeah. And so I was just like, whatever. And then, so I never brought it up to my mom. I just was like, was he serious? Anyway, so so I didn't have that because I didn't have a void of fatherhood. You know what I'm saying? My dad raised us, so I was good. So when I turned 18, my mom was like, so listen, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your dad is, you know, his name is Richard and this, this, that, and the third. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalil told me. And she was like, he told you? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I just didn't say anything, but, you know, I already knew. And so I could tell that was a load off for her that I took it so well mm. and that I already already kind of knew. And so I was just like, because I, I genuinely wasn't tripping. I was just like, all right. And so um, so this was when I turned 18. So this was, what was I, 18, 95? So um, years later, when Antoine Fisher came out, y'all remember that movie? Yeah. With Denzel Washington? With the, yeah. When, when I saw that movie and when Derek Luke's character gets introduced to, you know, his real family, 
I just cried hard. And th- I wasn't crying at movies at this time. And so I was just like, damn, where all this emotion come from? Like a hard cry, like vein out. And I was just like, I think I do want to meet my actual father. You know, so I, ch- I had to change a heart. And so I went on the quest to look for him. Since he did play in the NFL, he played for the Bears, the, the Eagles, and the Seahawks. I was able to find him because he was uh, coaching for a Canadian football league team at that time. He was on the staff. And so I was able to find him there. I went to their website, went to the faculty or the staff, and then they had the pictures up. Mm. And so I grabbed his picture. I was like, hey, Ma, is this, is this Richard? She's like, yep, that's him. And I was like, ah, okay. So I called up there, got into contact with him. He was like, oh, I was looking for you. And his voice was softer than I expected. Mm. Like, it was soft. I was like, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting this. I was like, I must have my grandfather's voice or whatever. So, <laughs> so, so we connected. And then uh, we talked a few times. And then he was he was just horrible at keeping contact, right? You know, and so because I, I figured like if your son finds you, you're gonna be you're gonna be a one on the communication reach out after that. And so I was just like I always felt like I had to do the majority of the the reach out. And so I was just like, man, just send me my sister's information so I can you know meet them and build with them. And so fast forward to like 2011. He passed away. My mom told me he had passed uh, from like a heart attack or something. And so I was like, but I had never gotten a chance to meet him in person, face to face. So I was just like, damn, man. So I cried, even though I never met him personally. I wasn't really in contact anymore. I was like, damn, I had that regret of not meeting him face to face. But you know, you want to see your father. You want to see if y'all share mannerisms or whatever. Right. And so uh, fast forward to. 2022, I got an Ancestry.com kit for Christmas, I think. So I finally took it. And then, you know, you get all your little results or whatever. You know, you, I'm, I'm 20% German, 27% Nigerian. You're getting all that. I'm just looking at that. Mm-hmm. I'm not even looking at, like, the, the genetic matches of, like, people that I see over here. And so I started looking at that. I'm like, oh, look at all these second and third cousins, man. And so it was this it was this girl on there named Monique. She was kind of high on the on the little list of, of genetic match. And so I kept noticing and the and the information, if you've never done ancestry, the information always changes as they get more. Mm-hmm. So like your your uh your ethnic uh percentage always changes. Like my German kept going up. My German is like 25 now. And so which I expected because my grandmother's white. So um, but I noticed this girl keep moving up. Mm. And then as my brothers took their ancestry, so now my son took it. So now when I look at the genetic matches, my son is first. And then I noticed that Monique is ahead of my brothers. So it's like my son and Monique. And I'm just like, wait a minute, how is she matching up this close more than my brothers? So that's when I was like, let me reach out. So I, I sent her a message and I was like, hey, where are you from? Like, you know, where'd you grow up or whatever? And then she didn't respond. And so m- months went by. And then I just happened to be talking about it. And I rechecked. And she had reached out. She was just like, oh, my God. You know, I'm so, I hope you don't mind. I Googled you. And this, this, that, and the third. I think your mom and my dad used to date back in the day. And once she said that, and I was just like, oh, well, this is my sister I'm talking to, basically. Just, mm-hmm. just from that, I was just like, it has to be. And so we started talking more and more. And then I was like, send me pictures of your dad. And she sent me like current pictures. He's still alive. He was like 85. And I was just like, send me something from back in the day. Cause I can't see the resemblance of somebody, you know, that senior. Yeah, right. And so uh, let me see the young joints. So I was just trying to see, cause I look just like my mom. I, look okay. I stole her face. And so, so I'm still trying to find, you know, similarities. I'm like, oh, kind of, he got a dimple, you know what I'm saying? His nose, I was just looking the cheekbones. And so I hit my mom up uh, the next morning. And I'm just like, hey, did you know a guy named Thomas uh, Letcher? And she's like, yeah, we used to date. And I was just like, all right. Well, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I told her about the ancestry results. And she, I was just like, you know, mm-hmm. 
She was like, you trying to call your mama a hoe? I'm like, no, no. No, I ain't saying nothing. I'm just coming in with the genetic material. I'm just coming in with science first. And so uh, so that's how I found, you know, my father. And then I met him um, December 2023, this past December. So it wasn't so Richard. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't Richard. Richard. It was never Richard. It was Thomas. So your mom, how did she make that? Did you ever ask her how to? Because, because at the time... She, when, <laughs> when it's a I nice asked, way to say it, because because here's what happened. So, you know, it was like some dating overlap, right? And so, uh, what had happened was she was dating Thomas, and then she found out that he was getting married. Oh, and so she was just like, you know, heartbroken on that, and so you know, she was kind of. In, in the in the meantime, somewhere in there, she was talking to Richard also. Right. And so, um, but when when my mom told me to call my godmother, her best friend, call Jerry and see what she say. And as soon as I called my godmother, the first thing she said on the phone, that is your daddy. That is your daddy. Thomas is your daddy. We knew it then. <laughs> we knew it then. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So she she gave me the right the real account. Right. So um she just thought Richard would have been the safer choice until she found out he was also already married. Ooh. Because she took me out there to Seattle because he was with the Seah- Seahawks at that time. That's when she found out he he was really married. So it was just like. Now, from that story, yeah. I believe he died no, thinking that you were his son. Yes. Because he said he was looking for you, too. He was looking for me. And then y'all me. talked. And then mm-hmm. he died yeah. now thinking that you were his son. Yeah. So he, he went to the grave with that, yeah. thinking, yeah. Damn. So, mm-hmm. But it wasn't like, he, he wasn't like no, yeah. talking to me. Like yeah, he, yeah. Wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't A1 on the communication, so it was just like. Maybe he had yeah. a feeling. Yeah, so he, he went to the grave <laughs> with that. And so, uh, so yeah, that's so Richard wasn't story. the one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you ever just say, okay, I want to make sure and do a test with your real dad? Or no, you just took it aside. I think ancestry is enough. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sim- in- simply because the 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 match accuracy was just that's the only way. Yeah, to I never it. did. Like, how would ancestry know right. that Monique would, would would just pop up, and why why would we even be connected? And then to talk to her and be like, "Yo, uh, you know, right. your, your mom used to date my dad." That the proof was in the pudding right. at that point, and she's right under my son. In terms of genetic matching, mm-hmm. does that like a, mean Monique also took an ancestry test and she's in the system? Yes. Mm-hmm. So she, she, she. If she didn't do ancestry, I probably would have never discovered this. That's why I don't do shout it. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to ancestry. Ancestry. Bring your family together. Right. So it was like a thirty-year journey for you to basically yeah. find. And so I met him face to face at the. I was at the Improv in Orlando, and they live out in Florida, so they came to the show. So I met him face to face there. Yeah, still in contact. Yeah, in con- like I, I talked to his wife more than him because you know he's old school. So yeah. and I'm a texter. So yeah. but I, I plan to go out there and you know uh, spend some time uh, this year. But y'all are just dropping <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. So because I, I don't, I don't want to mess this opportunity up and be having regret. I didn't spend time. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. That's cool. Where yeah. That's real cool. You said cool. they live in Florida? They live in Florida, yeah. Damn. So, uh-huh. you're going to go down there? Yeah. To, I'm going to go down there. Because they said, she said they're willing to travel, but I'm like, you know what I'm saying? They up there in age. I would rather. Uh, Florida set me back 10 years, man. Really? It's a dangerous place down there. Where? If Which you part? ever read the news, the only, oh, it's not, it's only, only the fucked going. up things that yeah. happened in this country happened in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Florida is crazy. I mean, it would be great for your comedy, yeah. I imagine. I love Just Florida. building up local stories. Because <laughs> I, I go down there, I perform in Florida a lot. Like, I do the Tampa Improv a lot. Uh, I do the Orlando Improv. Miami. I, lo- I like Miami as a city, and, mm. the, and the people are beautiful, of course, but, like, performance-wise, they don't have the best energy mm. in Miami. Like, they, they rank low on Miami. Yeah, you like, talk about best cities, they rank low. Like, Miami, Miami. Heat fans show I, up at halftime. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I also <laughs> rank Miami in one of my lowest cities, yeah. but that's just because my experience I had there. Mm. <sighs> I was about to get on a cruise ship. Stayed at this hotel mm-hmm. that my mom had gotten to look nice online. I let her do her thing. You yeah. know what I mean? I was young. I was like, cool. My mom got me this hotel. I'm going to go down there. I say that bitch. It had like an old bellhop dude in a fucking... It was like a haunted house. 
Months later, I'm reading through the internet talking about uh, worst hotels in America. <laughs> this fucking hotel was number one. <laughs> number one. I'll tell you, the bed was like sunken. <laughs> Ceilings were 25 foot tall, but the room was like 10 feet wide. Just the weirdest fucking hotel wow. I've ever been in. But it was like right down by the... And then I tried to buy... Weed from an undercover cop oh my at God. a bar. All this happened within like 24 hours. And then I left <laughs> on the cruise ship and came back. And I was like, man, fuck Florida. Wow. He was like just me and him and like his girl at the bar. And I was like, I'm going to ask this guy if he got some weed. You I'm just trying to take some weed under the, under the fucking cruise ship. And he's like, oh, man. He's like, I'm, I'm not on duty. but uh, And then he like flashed his badge. And I was like, yeah. Not today. And this is like way before he was like. <laughs> so he let, not he let you off. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he wasn't working. It was yeah. his girl. I'm sure he didn't want to fucking just <laughs> right. start arm barring me in the right, bar. Right. But. That's crazy. So then I had to go all the way to the Caribbean and find weed down there, which was a whole nother story in itself. You, this dude gave me his gold chain and his cell phone and then went and got the weed and was in like a little fucking compressed hockey puck. Things probably smuggled in in some gas tank, basically forced to buy. Because I was like, eh, I don't know if I want it. And he was like, You fucking want it. Oh, shit. At this point, I was like, Here's your stuff. Yeah. But it was like a hundred bucks for an ounce. So it was okay. like, You know, what are you doing? Nassau, getting? right? Yeah. 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 But then I got back on the ship and I felt good because some dude was like, I smoked all my weed. I haven't got high on it once. So they gave him fake weed. At least they gave me some. Oh, so you had the real. Yeah, the real. I but it to, wasn't like no, it wasn't no California shit. No. Okay, it wasn't that no. good. Yeah, I had to smoke a hefty size blunt gotcha. to get a buzz. Because <laughs> I performed on cruise ships a lot. Oh yeah, and, yeah. How's that? I don't like it. No, because you like trapped it. afterwards. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. You want to leave like the it. crowd? You don't want to hang out with them. They got so many rules on cruise ships. You got to have a, a forty minute clean set, and then you you got to have a dirty set, and then this has to be squeaky clean. But you can't do this twenty five minutes on this show. And you got so many rules, Damn. and like it's just I don't like it. Then I'm trapped there for seven days, so it's just like yeah, it cruise ships is my. <laughs> that's my bar for. Desperate measures. Mm. Like when financially, when times get hard, I'll do the cruise. It's a it's a money grab. Right. Well, there's this dude that lives on a cruise ship. Yeah. He says it's cheaper than paying rent somewhere. <laughs> Fucking lives year round on a cruise it, ship. It is cheap. One of those things. You save so much money as a comedian. Let's say because I know comedians, they'll do they'll do three weeks on the cruise ship, Dang. one off, mm. and just keep doing that. And you can stack. You can stack because you can make like three thousand a week. Are they giving oh, you food okay. and drinks and shit? Oh yeah, you just. You, or at the end, it's like when I got to the end of my cruise, there was like you owe us no, eight hundred no, dollars. You, you eat put on the your staff. Room. You <laughs> eat for free, so it's good money. You gonna pay for little things here and there, but. And I would assume getting women is easier because of the implication. But they don't, they don't want you. Mean you know, women? They don't want you smashing <laughs> the women like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they I'm sure you? it happens. They tell you? This, yeah. They, they, don't want, they don't want the yeah. married wives in there. Oh, yeah. And now he's in the same boat with disastrous. the husband. Because the cruise ship could get sued. Like, you mm. know, if a comedian takes down the wife and then this is a fiasco, they we're suing because the entertainment well, smashed my... Good you know thing I mean? for you, there's a new cruise ship going out of Florida now. And it's full swingers. Oh wow! Just straight sex party cruise ship. That's you might want to check back into the oh, no, the quality of the, 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 the swingers is the real, always low. The real it's swinger already, community is like <laughs> you had to do this. In your mind, you like you guys are swingers. In your mind, you thinking they're the best looking women, but nah. the reality is real sex on HBO. Yeah, <laughs> it was real sex on HBO. Yeah. It was like regular <laughs> people on that mug. It you was, know. it was. This is real but sex. You were still dude. in there like. Mm. Yeah, that's all I got. Definitely, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tony, you did this thing with Ryan Davis, who's also been on this show, one of my good friends. Yeah, you did great. the Michael Jordan LeBron thing. Yeah, that is the funniest thing. Cancel court. Oh my goodness, cancel great court. Shit. That thing is the funniest thing. Yeah, ever. So I know Ryan. He's re he really all that's in for LeBron. Yeah. Was that your role too? Were you really all in for Jordan, or which one do you feel like is better? I feel like Jordan is the goat. There you go. I feel Talk like Jordan it. is the straight goat. Now you know I I am a little bit biased because I am from Chicago okay. and I am a Bulls fan. Okay, but just he he is even if even if I wasn't attached. I would still be like Jordan is the goat because I saw it in real time. Yeah, you know a lot of a lot of people that argue LeBron, 
they were either too young or just didn't even exist when when Jordan was in his prime. Right. When you talk to people that have lived through the Jordan and LeBron era, there's a reason why they keep going Jordan. Mm-hmm. You it's, know what I mean? It's just a, such a difference of, like you said, being able to – when Jordan played, it was just a fucking – it's like a symphony. Yeah. It was so and beautiful. It was, it was different. It was, he, he, he had the killer the fucking instinct. game on and both he sides wanted it. He the wanted court. He wanted it. He yeah. like, I want this pressure. I want to and shoot yes. this shot. It was almost the same feeling of like turning on a Mike Tyson fight. You know yeah. what I mean? When you yeah. saw Jordan come out. Yeah. yeah. You it saw was him serious on the, it was, business. It was yeah. different yeah. It was than physical. everybody else. It was like, I don't want to leave a right. sec. You know what I mean? Right. Like Jordan it was, was different to watch. Then. Yeah. They, you know what I'm saying? It, it, was, it was just a different right. time. And you know, a, a lot of people say, well, the athletes weren't as, the competition wasn't as good back then. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. But when you, when you look at the players that he played against, Shaq, Hakeem Olajuwon, mm. Charles Barkley, yeah. mm. Patrick Ewing and them, you know, uh, uh, Alonzo Mourning. When they say that mm. same shit, too, is I have the same argument that, like, yeah, but put Michael Jordan on the the regimen that LeBron James has been on uh, nutrition-wise and sure. training-wise that yeah. they all have this advantage now. Like, right. all those athletes would be different athletes. Even if you put Luke Longley... Mm-hmm. On the type of training regimen that they do these days, right. he'd be more athletic. He'd be For a sure. better player. Like he'd move differently. Like you can't put the. That's why mainly for me, it's hard to compare the eras because anything right. you argue this way, you can say the same thing There's about nutrition and fucking Absolutely. supplementing and taking games off. Like Jordan played every game every year. Yeah, man. Yeah. Every yeah. game every yeah. year. For sure. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? So did you win the argument? I won the second. I lost the first one. Won the second one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. how does that go? The filming, the preparation. Mm-hmm. How long does it take? For me, uh, <clears throat> I didn't do a ton of prep. You know, I just went in there mainly on just stuff I already knew. Um, and going against Ryan Davis is a hand. Ryan yeah. Davis could be an attorney for real. <laughs> like he 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 dissects. If you if you don't watch his stuff on social media, the way he breaks stuff down is damn near just. It's a symphony of just yeah, like, it's so hard he, work. I'm like, y'all pair me against one of the sharpest <laughs> comedians. The way he breaks things down, just beyond like the Jordan, just the way he 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 dissects everything. So I was like, damn man, I had a tall order going against. So Ryan. it's all on you. Like, there's no not a single script, but any notes is like. Whatever you know about Jordan against whatever but he knows. Cancel court, cancel court does have like little notes that they have already, but we we mainly come in on the stuff that we already you know cooked up and did research on. So I just went in there uh, just just on the strength of because because you kind of already know what arguments are gonna come in favor of LeBron, so you gotta be ready for that and the stuff that could be said against Jordan. So you already you you kind of kind of be ready for that too, and so. Uh, on the re up, it's just like, all right, I already know what's coming. I already know what was going to be thrown. So let me go from there. That's so, cool. Yeah, man. And so, you know, the, the shoot didn't take long. Um, the, the biggest wait is just waiting for them because they do multiple episodes in a day. So the, the main thing is just waiting for another episode to end. And then we go in there and uh, knock it right out. That's cool. And yeah. is there any shit talking before, or they he keeps his this? And I don't want to give you my. Because you don't want to you don't want to give too much away beforehand. <laughs> so we just we just talk regular stuff. Like before, we were just talking about hip hop. Before we were just talking about okay. like Nas and like you know just rap, Drake, or whatever stuff that wasn't involved in the case. You yeah. know what I mean? And so so we can go in fresh. Yeah. So as an entertainer, you prefer stand up or acting? Stand up. Stand up, even though even though acting was my first love and my first passion, and the reason I even came to California because I was an actor first. Uh, I started in theater. Stand up is is like this, this. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. So now, like you know, when I do do an acting gig, I'm excited. But it's so many other cooks in the kitchen with any acting role you do. It's producers, it's directors, it's writers, is other actors editors editors you know you might get i was in i was in whiplash they cut my part out mm. so i was just like <laughs> you know what i'm saying I'm like damn you know so you see my silhouette in the back but it's like this is an oscar winning film i could have been in this mm. but but that's out of your control so it's just like it's so many things out of your control when it comes to acting that stand up it's all me 
You know what I mean? And so I love that element of it. It's like, and from a business standpoint, I feel more in control of my own business doing stand-up comedy. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not at the mercy of a casting director, a producer, a movie studio, a director, none of that. All of that is white clean. It's just like, is you, are you funny? Is your material good? Do you connect with the audience? Can you build that base? And then you go from there. So stand up for sure. Since well, you so- mentioned Whiplash, I was working with Damien Chazelle because like, I think he was before, he wasn't even 30 when he directed that. Yeah, he was young as hell. Yeah. Like I had never, I'm a movie guy. I didn't know who this kid was. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'll do it. And then when I went to the table read, you know, I, of course I knew who J.K. Simmons was. But the lead in that, Miles Teller, I wasn't really familiar with him yet. And I was just like, oh, okay. And I was just, and JK was killing it at the table read. I was just like, God damn. <laughs> and, you know, Paul Reiser was there. And, like, you know, so I'm just there. And, you know, I had a small, I was just a stagehand in this movie, right? You know what I'm saying? But I had lines. And so I was just like, wow. And this is, you know, I had no clue. You, you never know what a movie is going to be until it's, until it's out. And so that movie um, was fucking incredible. Yeah, Whiplash is fire. That was such a good movie. So I was just like, "Damn it, damn!" You seen it? I haven't seen Whiplash. It's good. It's good. good. I'm gonna go see it now. Yeah, for sure. It's good. It's Tony. Who do you think right now stands in at the top of your the comedy period? Like, what's your top five comedians right now? Not maybe not your all time favorites, Uh but who you who do you feel like is the top five, top three, or your top comedians that you personally enjoy. Hey, this is tough because I don't really have a top because it always fluctuates. Um, and I, I just feel like, I just feel like, honestly, like, you know, looking at these comedy specials, they be hit and miss, honestly. Mm. And I know, I know it's not right for me to say that as a fellow comedian, but they be hit and miss in terms of just like how good they are. Like, great comedians, I'll just be like, mm. and then I'll be like, man, do I see too much stand-up or whatever? Bill Burr is one of my favorites. Uh, By far. In, in the he's now. awesome. He is just, <clears throat> he is just like a comedian that if he's going up, I'm going to sit down and watch him. If we're in the same venue, he's, when he's off the stage, he's hilarious. When he's on the stage, he's hilarious. Um, and I just feel like he always delivers. Mm. Uh, Bill Burr, um, I really like uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Shout out to Sebastian. I love Sebastian Man, Maniscalco. I don't know Sebastian. That motherfucker is so that, funny. I got put onto him like Man. 10 years ago. I watched everything. Aren't you embarrassed? Did, yeah. yeah. His, his comedy special, Aren't You Embarrassed? He's like this Italian guy. Yeah. Fucking okay. Hilarious. He's funny to me, yes. man. Uh, I really his didn't... first shit, the shit that put me on him was the uh, one where he's like shopping at Ross or whatever. And he's uh, like... It's not my size. Fucking yeah, talks yeah, across the store. Like, <laughs> Ross is so, so messy, funny, man. Huh? His act outs and his mannerisms yeah. and the way he delivers the mm-hmm. material is just chicken thighs. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh yeah. wait a minute, is that the guy that kind of reminds me of like, uh, like? Have you seen the Frank Irishman? Sinatra kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. He's oh, a, yeah. Okay. He's in I've movies now, too. Oh, okay. 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 He was in the Irishman and he yeah, yeah, had yeah. a movie with the Zero out recently. Okay. I've seen him. Man, uh, let's see. I like Deion Cole. I like, um, you know, uh, Mike Gibbs be cracking me up, man. I feel like Mike Gibbs gets overlooked, but his special never rated, underfaded. Wait, underrated, never faded? Mm-hmm. When he shot it in Detroit. I That's the funniest comedy special of the past, like, 10 years, however old it is. Mm-hmm. That one, to me, is the one I keep coming back to, keep watching it. Um, and so as far as like my peers and stuff like that, uh, and not even necessarily my peers, just cats that crack me up, uh, always, always draw a blank. Like as, as the, who's in the now, I'll be like, uh, 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 Kevin on stage be cracking me up. Uh, who else is be having me dying? LeVar Walker is funny to me. Um, Leslie Jones be tearing me up live. Like she be having me laughing hard <laughs> live. Because uh, one, one thing I will say, too, about comedy specials, they never really truly capture the essence of, like, a live show. Oh, okay. 
like the energy is, is rarely the same. Mm. And like, you know, when I, I can see the same set live and then see it on the special, I'll be like, it was better live. Right. And like, uh, that happens a lot with specials. And I just be like, like, even when I see like Kevin Hart, sometimes I'll see him do material live. And it's just like, man, this is, it'd be hidden. And then when I see it in the special, I'll be like, no, it was, it was, it was better <laughs> live. You know what I mean? And so, um, and I know for me, comedically, my my three influences are Damon Wayans, okay, Sinbad, okay, and Jerry Seinfeld, okay. I know it's an interesting mix. That but is, those three comedians are in me comedically. Like when you, what you see is them because I, I have the energy of Sinbad in terms of just like you know, and people see me as clean and just like I have this clean energy or whatever mm-hmm. and that you know Sinbad was clean he didn't cuss on stage but I'd be cussing on stage but <laughs> people never it never registers with them they'd be like you so clean I was like I was cussing no, but you, <laughs> you clean <laughs> and so his energy and his off the top uh, element cause I you know I love going off the top mm-hmm. and it's just so that's that's in me Damon Wayans will, he'll, he'll go into an act out and, and sit in it that's me as well like mm. he'll go dark he'll go personal that's me as well um, and then Jerry Seinfeld will talk about the most mundane stuff and dissect it for 20 30 minutes <laughs> I'll do that as well like I had a cat and dog joke that's like 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> And so, and he'll just talk about just the regular everyday things. And like, why is toast toast? Yeah. Right. And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those three guys are my, that's my holy trinity. Okay. Of like, you know, comedians that influence me directly. Because I watch, I didn't really watch Jerry Seinfeld specials like that, but just his comedic mind. And like, you know, Seinfeld is my favorite TV comedy of all time. Mine's true. And so... That comedic mind there, but Sinbad and Damon Wayne's stand up specials, they was on repeat. Damon Wayne's was untouchable. Oh my God. I never forget when he just said, I retired. I'm the best. I'm Man. not doing it anymore. Yeah. He was like, I'm good. Damon That's Wayne's, it. he got a new TV show coming out with his son. He oh. does. Oh, okay. Gonna yeah, yeah, it's going to be dope. Yeah. Damon, Damon Wayne's like, I feel like he doesn't get the stand up credit he deserves. He gets mm. his credit for like being a you know comedic actor yeah. and, and living color in his movies. Right. But from a stand up perspective, he used to his kill HBO it. specials, kill it. Fire. Yeah. Fire. So, who was your favorite character on Seinfeld? I go back and forth because initially I started watching Seinfeld when it first hit. And I was watching it, and I didn't, I didn't even fully understand it yet, but I liked it. I was mm-hmm. like, dude, this is something different. I'm not really laughing that much, but I like this. I don't know what this is. Right. Because I had never experienced a show like that. And so initially, I was like, because initially, uh, I was just like, all right. And then Kramer took over. Okay. Kramer became the... Because I, I was already familiar with Michael Richards because he was in movies that I'd seen before. He was in Problem Child and Transylvania 6 5000 and, like, he stood out. And then um, and then he started getting more zany as the, as the shows progressed. He would bust, slide up in the apartment. <laughs> he became a fan favorite. But then it would be George. See. And then it, it, it would just be like, so now, and I like Elaine. And then I like Jerry as the straight man. So I would always just go back and forth. And so now I would say George. George is the funniest character yeah. that ever hit TV. As yeah. I get older, I relate with him more. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I see why he did all George that George Costanza, <laughs> everything he did made sense. And the more and more you watch it, you realize that he's Larry David. He's Larry David. He's yeah. Larry. You watch it, you be like, that's Larry David. That's Larry right David. He wrote all his lines. Yes. Every one of them. When you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, you're yeah. looking at George Costanza. Absolutely. And so it's just like, so that to me, and then they do callbacks on the show, because I'm a fan of callbacks. Mm. They were always called back to some earlier when they were in the show. It was just that's that's my favorite TV comedy. Yeah, hands down, well, hands down. Staying with Seinfeld, do you, did you see he's recently in the news because he was talking about oh he misses a time when men were men. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh. He said he said what now? Like, he said he made that new movie about like Pop Tarts or yeah, whatever that's unfrosted. based in like the fifties or sixties yeah. or whatever. And he's saying like that time had something about it. He said where genders basically were agreeable upon their roles in society mm-hmm. and there wasn't so much chaos and men could be men and like basically saying shit like that. Right. 
So I mean, that's a slippery slope because yeah, it looked like men that's the could slopes be men. we like to go on here, right? <laughs> men, could, men could be men and women could be women, and everybody's in their places, but it was still toxic as fuck. <laughs> That's what people don't, you know, underneath you, yeah, uh, it's a man working. He bring home the bacon and his wife is cooking. They know what it is. At the same time, when that door shuts, what kind of shit is going on while that door is shut? You mm. know what I'm saying? Are you, are you, you know, are you verbally abusive to your wife? Are you mentally abusive? All of that type of stuff. The intolerance on your kids, the stuff you're putting on your kids, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no child of mine going to do this. And then you disowning your kids for whatever reason. You had all that back in the day as well. So it's like, yeah, I get what you're saying. Your men could be men, but it's also a lot of toxic shit. It's like those people to be like, they, they've been married for 40 years, but what kind of marriage is it? It could be a bullshit marriage for 40 mm. years. So it's like, yeah, a lot of people are getting divorced, but... <clears throat> A lot of these marriages where they stayed together, that shit was toxic too. So it's like, you know, I feel like now what we consider soft is we're communicating now. You know, we're in an era where you could talk about mental health. You can talk about, you know, sexual identity now. Like as before, you ain't talking about that. Nah, man. That's ridiculous. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't talk about it. Keep that it, shit man. to yourself. Yeah, it's no, like, no. <laughs> hey, I don't know. It's, it's, said, it's wild now because, God, I, we men never really had anyone to talk to. Mm-hmm. Now, I wonder, would I talk to him now? Would you talk to, so like, if you had a, a, a person that you could talk to, would you talk to? But would I be sharing the bad shit that happened to me? I don't know if I would do that. I just keep the shit to myself. But that, that's part of I'm the I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. 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 But you be bottling stuff up. A lot, a lot of times we think we're good when we're not. And so we be No, like, I know I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you good and with okay, that. And I'm good You're with okay it. With and I'm being good. good. And I'm good with it. As long as it doesn't spill over into you know your what, loved ones. You know what? Yeah, yeah. I get like the kids and all that stuff. Yeah. I understand that. But sometimes when you like be having them soft moments in front of your girl and then, you know, one evening she brings it back up. She and uses you, it again. Yeah, you be like, that motherfucker right there. Yeah. Like, like that, that's that's what I'd be like. See, I shouldn't have told you shouldn't shit. Have to, yeah. You're shouldn't just told, like your father. <laughs> shouldn't have told you yeah. nothing. Yeah, because you know, we were vulnerable and we shared. There you go. And then they didn't they didn't there you they go. didn't honor our, our little tender moment. Yeah, like, nah, yeah, man, yeah. They, they put bring the it up. off of the flower. It's just like, damn, you gonna bring that back up? Yeah, remember you cried when you was watching? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and now, now you like. Then you go back into your shit like, nah, I ain't, like, I ain't giving that nothing. motherfucker nothing I'm no more. I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man. You hear me? And so yeah. for me, because I'm, I'm very much on the side of uh, being vulnerable. Like I'm very like transparent about everything now. Because mm-hmm. I, I like dwelling in that space because locking stuff away just didn't benefit me. You know what right. I'm saying? And so, and then, and then when you're vulnerable and transparent. People can't really use shit against you like they like they want to mm-hmm. because it's just like, yeah, I said that. Yeah, I felt that way. This is what it is. I told everybody that. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And so it's like the Eminem approach on 8 Mile. Right. Where at the end, he was just like, yeah, I am white. Yeah, I do live in the trail. Yeah, and my girl, the fuck this other dude. What, what else you got? And then people just be like, oh, well, shit, we ain't got no weapons against you now. Right. So Last time I opened up to a psychiatrist, I got kicked out of sperm donation. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I, it could go either way. I need you out of my office. And this, and this, is, this is the part. It's true. He's telling the truth. Oh, you really got kicked out? No, no, yeah. he really got yeah. He was out. trying to donate sperm. He was trying to donate Everything sperm. Everything was fine. He went to the psychologist. They, they kicked no, him out of the program. Get him out of here. <laughs> I <laughs> wish I was kidding. <laughs> when keeping wow. it real goes wrong. I thought he was kidding. <laughs> no. Nah. Wow. They kicked his ass right out. <laughs> yeah. You a wild boy, man. I try to be truthful with the yeah. people, but they used it against me. I mean, but that's the risk we take <laughs> in being honest. That's the big risk. So I, I feel like that's the difference. You chose the wrong now. time, Alejandro. You're going to try to make money. Yeah, yeah, I should have been a story. He was like, manager. wow, I'm going to take advantage of this psycho- psychology session. <laughs> but I, right. I, 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 I realized that I'm like, any more questions? And she's like, no. <laughs> wow. That's all we need. That's because that money situation, that's what really happened. Mm. But I feel like back in the day, back in the 50s and 60s, you couldn't really be honest. 
Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank God. Yeah. How you feel? You can be honest about your racism, and that 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 got a pass. But. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> Other bottled up stuff's awesome. Right. How you feel the pendulum in comedy is right now with censorship or because I feel right now you can say whatever you want in comparison to 2017. I think mm -hmm. we're closer to 2008 type of era yeah. than, you know, the whole cancel culture. What do you see that you're more in the scene? I think the cancel culture is losing, losing steam in terms of, uh, especially for comedians, because, yeah, I can say something that you don't like. Okay. I'll just fund my own comedy tour. Because you're going to have a fan base that, that fucks with you. So they're going to be like, like look at Louis C.K. Mm. Jerking off in front of people. Coming back. And you think he was going to be canceled? No. He, people he, still showing up to see the comedy. And if people still show up, you can make a living. Kramer that, Kramer dude. trying to make a comeback, too. Not going into it. Well. <laughs> I heard the comedy store said he could come back. <laughs> That, it's gonna be a little tougher for him because <laughs> I don't know if he's funny on stage. Yeah, Louis yeah, C.K. Yeah. is solidified yeah. funny. Yeah, Michael Richards. I don't know if he's funny as a comedian. I don't know. And he has his own website, and he's kind of going against Ticketmaster because the way he sells tickets yeah. is not. It, he tries to avoid the Ticketmaster mm -hmm. so he doesn't have like all the fees and all that stuff. Right. But he has to pick certain stadiums yeah. that are not tied with Ticketmaster. Yeah. Yeah, but you can still throw sure, he don't give a fuck if you, he's making money. You can yeah. still make, you know, what I'm saying, all right, I'm not gonna do this, you know, thirty thousand seater, but I just do, you know, I can make. He can still make twenty, thirty, forty, fifty yeah. k a night. And he doesn't mm. have to divide it's crazy it. money. Yeah, so I feel like comedians are pretty much the safest of the the celebrities that you know can say what they want. Yeah, you're going to get in some hot water. You're going you're gonna to piss some people off. You're going to lose a certain quadrant of your fan base. But then that like, if you say some racist bullshit, the racist is going to be like, well, we coming to see. <laughs> so it's really like, you know, you really can't lose. You can, you can lose a little something. Like maybe Comedy Central won't put you on there or, you know, Netflix might not give you a special, but you can still make a, a really good living, you know, uh, have you ever had yeah, to are. face online backlash? Uh, not yet. Uh, the only backlash I get is like, you know, when I go in on racism. Okay. You know, people be in my comments say, I didn't come here for this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't, yeah, just stick to animals. Stick to the voice of us. <laughs> like, whenever I talk about, like, racist bullshit that's going on, you know, they be in there. You know, those cats <laughs> with the yeah. sunglasses and the hat on and they driving their truck. That's their profile pic. They not here for the, <laughs> They got them cop shades on, yeah. the Republican uh, red bands. Yeah. He gets it all shit. the time when he talks about Kaylin Clark. He's like, oh, look at this racist right there. And it's a white guy in a profile picture. They don't want to hear that. I'd be like, man, racism in America exists. Where are the animal voiceovers? <laughs> and, like, and sometimes I'll do it just to weed out my fan base. You know, I, I'll just I'll just make a post out of nowhere. Like, look, I believe that racism in America still exists. I believe in supporting the gay community. I'm a gay ally. All that shit. If you don't like this shit, get the fuck off my page. Mm. I'll do that to filter people out. If if it's been too cool for too long, and I, I get an <laughs> influx of followers, let me show you who I am on the underneath before you get too comfortable, and then just I let that it. filter out. Yeah, for sure. I'm a supporter of the impossible pussy. The who? The impossible pussy. What's that? It's transgender. Oh, God. Oh. That's what he's saying. Oh, you, okay, you gotcha. said you're, Yeah, I'm a supporter. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I'll try it out, maybe. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> I'm an ally, man. Like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll defend. He keeps bringing it up. I think he's trying to pitch it to the internet. I think he has yeah, tried. Him trying to get... Because it's fake. I'm trying to get some right. fake pussy. Right. Yeah. No, but it, it's on a real person. They just right. don't have a dick no more. Yeah. I don't know why he wants to try that so bad. I don't know. <laughs> you got yeah. real issues, Alejandro. Definitely. <laughs> you know, it's like when somebody tells you, it's like, oh, man, look, check out this restaurant. You check it out. Sometimes. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure that works Sometimes. the same way sexually. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm not that curious. Yeah. I'll take a pause. You know? yeah, I'm not that curious. Calm down. Yeah, definitely pause. Have you ever been with a transgender person? No. But... There was this time, allegedly, though. they said I was tricked. Oh, uh, we don't oh. even want to talk about that. I was in a Jamaican vacation. <laughs> Please, let's finally talk about this. Holy hey, you know, shit. Oh I God. was drinking a little bit, 
And then this is the part that I don't like telling about this story. I think she was the lady of the night. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So wait, she, wait, 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 wait. She wasn't the lady. Let's just I was there. I was, was there. I was there. I was there. I wasn't there. there. It was an office but trip. I saw some footage. Oh. Oh. And it was not. Be, be, before I tell the story, no, no kissing happened. Okay. <laughs> no kissing from my end because I think the, the video shows that. What do you mean from your end? Because she kissed my ear. I saw it in the replay. <laughs> I didn't notice. Okay. Okay. But like, the whole thing was that she came up to me and then uh, she was like hey you want to blow up some pussy and I was like no and I kept saying no and then she kept lowering the price and I'm like I'm good I'm good I'm yeah. good what was the price it started like I think at a hundred and then like I I guess I knowed myself to I'll buy you a drink yeah. <laughs> damn <laughs> I, I'm only there for like I just I'm, I'm a master of deals. You she know? was gonna <laughs> she was gonna buy you a drink to suck your dick. No, no, it's like oh, oh, just no, give no. me a drink. I'm like, oh. no, no, you know? hey, I keep telling y'all it wasn't the she. Let's stop. No, that right no. like, okay, let's, cause, let's stop cause that the right thing here. about the she was because a person that he's associated with has a mom, and that mom did the entire trip was hitting on me. So she saw me talking to the girl, and then she was saying, like, oh, yeah, I went to the bathroom, and I Listen, saw her tape her no, penis. No, 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 no. I saw her. <laughs> I saw the person that you were dancing with majority of the night. Majority was like a five-minute conversation. And we had to let you know, because you had been drinking, that, hey... We don't know if you really know what you're getting yourself into. I don't know. So you saw the, yeah, the yeah, tape up. This, yeah, no, no, no. Oh. No, we didn't see the tape up. Oh. I saw the person gotcha. he was dancing with, yeah. and it was Having obvious. a conversation. Okay. Maybe I she didn't drink that night. Oh, okay. So you yeah, had the sober I, eyes. Did, I was there with yeah. it. I was like, hey, hey. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> then, you know, like, as we were walking away, I got a tap, and then I walk away. Nothing happened. Okay. But I, you know what I hate about this society is that masculine women, now because of this whole, you know, transgender <laughs> thing, now there, there's, uh, you know, there was constantly suspicion. Now, watching the video, she did have big hands. She was... <laughs> she was <laughs> She was moving at me around like Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Definitely had a great defensive lock on. So I'm not the one doing the approach. I I felt a lot of shame, but I'm gonna go to the grave just like Richard, uh, thinking that was a woman. Okay. Good luck. All right. <laughs> That, no, one that, else that's think, no one else thinks that, though. That was good. <laughs> right. That's, that's yeah. what he thinks. He wants to put that in there. Right. <laughs> if she identifies as a woman, it was a woman. Exactly. Mm, but why we would, don't know how she identifies. But why would she? Why would a person be like, hey, try to sell pussy to then, like, that's just dangerous, especially in Jamaica? Wait, like, what, she probably said, said pussy. You said she said it in a certain <laughs> way. How did you say she said it? Hey, you wanna blow in some pussy? Oh, I think she said pussy. pussy. No, 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 pussy. She was just blow in, in some accent, pussy, bro. I don't know. Uh, well, we can move on. <laughs> I, I, I'm done having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it was, man, it was a the tough fact night. that you stayed there for long enough to have to like break it down so many times concerns me a little. Hey, man, means, were you know? waiting for the because? I don't know what was running through my brain, you know. I just knew I was in control. But there was, there, there was a moment where I looked up and there was this big Jamaican guy. I'm like, okay, he's the guy who's going to rob me. Because that's what I started telling her. I'm like, I'm not going anywhere with you because it, it, like, as soon as I go to the corner, you're going to rob me. I wouldn't do that to you, honey. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. First of I don't all, know. you putting that thought in her head is crazy. Just keep that shit to yourself if yeah. you ever have that thought again. Definitely got to keep throw that thought I, I, I had a D near me. I know I was protected. We had our eye on you. We wasn't letting you go nowhere. <laughs> You know? He definitely had a, a few too many drinks. He just got caught in a bad situation. That called a bad situation, man. I mean, that it was all the time. No, not all the time. It <laughs> <laughs> happens all the time. And when you're in Jamaica, man, and then see, Tony's a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Because I usually have that spider sense, like I know. Yeah. But this time, the spider sense wasn't tingling. It wasn't tingling, man. <laughs> Peter Parker. Nah, I don't know. 
So, Tony, what do you have coming up in the future? So, uh, I have podcasts. I'm, I'm part of three podcasts right now. Uh, I'm part of Daddy Issues, Verbal Cardio, and uh, the Ball Brothers podcast. So, I got three of those. Uh, Verbal Cardio drops every Wednesday, Daddy Issues every Thursday, and Ball Brothers every Tuesday. How's uh, that one? The Ball which, Brothers. It's, which it's, brothers is it? Is it all three of them? It's me and Kev. Okay. It's me okay. and Kev on stage, and we just talk about well, they, we'll we'll do a ridiculous list. The top ten gospel singers we think can fight. Okay. You know, just like you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And so, um, really fun. We mad silly. Um, that's a way for us to get our movie buff nut off, if you mm-hmm. will, disguising the other stuff. And so, uh, really fun. Verbal cardio is me by myself, primarily. Sometimes I have guests on there, but it's usually just me. And then uh, Daddy Issues is me, Keon Poli, D.C. Irvin, Craig Wayans, and Chaz Rogers. And um, so, yeah, so I got those going. Um also, I do a Tony Baker and Friends show. If you're anywhere in L.A., mm-hmm. I do Tony Baker and Friends every month at Flappers in Burbank. Um, also doing, uh, we doing like Ball Brothers Comedy, too. Uh, we do that live on stage as well. So we're going to get that going here real soon, too. So, yeah, that's what I got going on. Okay. Yeah, I'm man. Of that. Hey. So are you one of the typical comedians, like you gone – Thursday through Monday? Not this year. I took this year off of touring. Okay. Uh, so I sat down for a full year. So I'm going to stick to that. Um, then I'll be back on the road next year. Okay. I, I, I've been working nonstop since, really since I started comedy. That's a tough life. A real center. Yeah. Like touring is tough. Yeah, for sure. Especially when you're doing five shows, five, six shows a weekend. You'd be tired and then you just keep going. But, you know, the money the money is the money. So it just we'd be working. And so I was like, I'm sitting down for a full year um, just so I can rest and focus on, you know, uh, you know, letting the people miss me in other cities because mm-hmm. I, I feel like I was coming back too much. I can focus on my, my social media content, rebuild the audience again. And so that's what I've been doing. Okay. Yeah, man. All right, man. Thanks for coming in. Thanks Another for classic me, episode. Have me back. In the books. Woo-hoo. Do you guys have closing noises? Uh-oh. No, no, we don't do closing. <laughs> no closing noises? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs>